here today only because I don't want Will to be mad at me and I, <laughs> I had told him I was going to speak up here and I, that's fine. I love Will, I just don't want him mad at me. But <laughs> join me in a prayer, please. Lord God, may the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Help me to send your message in the way you would like it to be sent and help them to receive it in the way you would like it to be received. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you may remember, I guess sometime in the fall, probably September, we had this activity called Connecting Generations Initiative. How many of you remember that? We had up and on the envelope were numbers and inside the envelope was a name and some instructions. I, when I presented this to you, I presented it as a fundraiser with not so much emphasis on raising funds. I wanted the emphasis to be on connecting with the young people or connecting with people who are new to the church. And I have received some messages about how people have connected. I am personally aware of definitely one connection that has been made in my family, which was beautiful. And it's just been awesome what I've heard about what's happened. Now here's the thing, if you got one of these envelopes and you have not donated, that's fine. But if you haven't made your connection, please try to make the connection. As a matter of fact, just wanted to update you. We made about $700 with the fundraiser, which was really cool, which like I said, I wasn't really expecting money, but I was happy to receive the funding. Here's the thing, why is this important to me? It's important for a few reasons. One reason is because studies have shown that the more adults of the same faith who can feed into children and teens, the stronger their faith will be and they won't lose that faith as they become older. You recognize that there aren't that many younger people here in the church, right? And it's not just this church, it's all the churches. And in order to strengthen that tie that they have with the church, more of us need to feed into them. So this was just my way of trying to get more of us to feed into the kids. But once again, it's not just the kids. It's also new people, people who are new to the church, people who haven't been to the church in a while. This was my way of doing that. Hopefully, you all have had an opportunity. And guess what? You don't need this little envelope to connect with children. You don't need this envelope to connect with new people. Just do it. It, it, okay, it's not that easy sometimes, but I'm going to give you a couple of tips a little, little bit later. This, and also, one of the other reasons why it's important is because, as I was sharing, it's our history. We need to share our history with the new people. We need to share our history with the kids. So many things have happened to make this Newark United Methodist Church be here. So many people have sacrificed, so many people have fed into the activities of the church. Those of you who know about it should share that information because if you don't share it, then it's lost. Unless we have some archivist or some history buff who wants to do research about the church, we, we won't know it. It'll all be gone. And wouldn't you rather share it with someone who has a connection to the church so that they can continue and then that will strengthen their connection to the church? This kind of brings me to today's text, which is Psalm 48. In Psalm 48, it was written by the descendants of Korah. Some Bibles might say the sons of Korah, but it just means descendants, not directly sons. The sons of Korah wrote this psalm, and it's a beautiful psalm praising God. But what's interesting about this psalm is who Korah was. Korah was around with Moses as he crossed through the wilderness after, he, after the exodus from Egypt. Korah was one of the sons of the Levites. So he was a Levite, one of the sons of Levi, who was a son of Jacob. And the thing about Korah is his duty as a Levite was to carry the tabernacle. Of course, not by himself, because the tabernacle was massive. The tabernacle was 45 feet long, about 15 feet deep, 15 feet high. So he and all of his descendants had to carry the tabernacle for 40 years. Sometime during this 40-year period, 
Kora decided, I'm sorry, but I don't like this job. <laughs> it, 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 it's kind of sucky, you know. We're, we're carrying this huge tabernacle. And mind you, that it's just massive. It's not just massive, but it's also parts of it are built with gold, which makes it even heavier. So he's, he doesn't want to do this. He wants the job of Aaron and Moses. So Korah gets together about 250 of his closest friends and relatives and decides, we're going to challenge Moses and Aaron. We're going to talk to God and try to take their position. Now, what kind of craziness is this? God appointed Moses and Aaron to be the leaders, and you're going to go against them and petition God to take their place. Okay, how do you think this is going to work out? Right. So, so he, he presented this to Moses and told Moses what he wanted to do, and Moses said, okay, you know what, I'm going to have a chat with God and tell him what you want to do and so you can have some time to talk to God. God told Moses, Moses, I hear you. I get what you're saying, but here's the thing. When it's time for me to talk to Korah, make sure all your people are nowhere near Korah. <laughs> Hint. <laughs> okay, so Korah gets his time with God. He and his 250 friends and family come up to God, they have candles, incense, you know, they're ready to petition God to be leaders. And then the entire earth opens up and sucks them all in. Korah forgot his why. The reason he was carrying that tabernacle is because God said so. The reason that Moses and Aaron were leaders is because God said so. But why is that important to the psalm? Because the psalm was written by the descendants of Korah. These are descendants of that greedy, evil man who did not appreciate anything. All he wanted to do was complain about the job that he was given. Have you ever tried to lead someone somewhere and they wanted to complain? Yes, of course we have. We've tried to get people to do things and all they can do is complain. But his descendants wrote this beautiful psalm praising God talking about the glory of God and how great God was. And there's even a line in here that says that they even valued the judgments that God has made, including that judgment <laughs> that sucked their family into the hole. Why is that included? Because they know the story. They know their history. Because if nothing else, those Israelites were really good at sharing their history, really good at passing down the information about what God had done for them, what God didn't do for them. They shared the good, the bad, the indifferent. They shared their history. I mean, really, that's the only reason we have all this information is because they shared their history. What happens if they didn't share their history? Alex, go ahead. No one would know about it. But also what might happen is their descendants might have done the same thing they did and got swallowed up in a hole because they were complaining. You want to share your history so people don't make the same mistakes that were made in the past. That's another reason to share your history. But what would the world look like if we did share our God stories? How would it look for us if we spent time talking to our family, friends, 250 closest neighbors about what God had done for us. I think that some things that might change would be we'd have less crime because more people would have been introduced to Jesus. I think we'd have more equity across the board. Now granted, a lot of people don't want equity, but I think we'd have more equity in living conditions. I think we'd have less anxiety and stress because people would have a resource, somewhere to turn when they were having issues. And that brings us to today's the kids. Our kids are struggling. They're struggling with school. They're struggling with a lot of anxiety. They're struggling with what's going to happen in the world. I know, I mean, I've talked to these kids and they're concerned. But if we give them our God stories about what God has done for us, how he shared with us, and what he's brought us through, 
then our kids have a resource to use for when they're having issues, when they're struggling, they have somewhere to go. When we don't share our God stories with our kids, with our families, with friends, with new people coming into the church, we're doing them a disservice. We're not giving them the tools they need to have the best life. And we are certainly not giving them the tools they need to have eternal life. Because what does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. How can they believe in something that they don't know anything about? We have to talk to people about Jesus. We have to tell them the good news because we are the ones who know it. We are the ones who benefit from it. We are the ones who are best at sharing our stories. And it's a little scary. I know reaching out, talking to people and sharing your stories but when you share your stories, you make that connection with people. And when you make a connection with people, you start building trust and you start building these relationships. And as I've mentioned this before, that once we start building relationships with people and they see what kind of people we are, granted, some of the Christians are not the, you know, maybe not the people you want to emulate, but I hope that we are people we want, you want to emulate. Once people start seeing how we are, how generous we are, how loving we are, how serving we are. They will want to be more like us because that's a good thing. It makes people feel good. So we have to share the stories. Okay, so enough about that. You, got, you see what I'm saying? We share our stories. We share the God stories, but how do we do that without alienating people? How do we do that without people saying, ah, get out of my face? Well, you can start with little things. Start with something small. For example, let's say you're driving down the road, someone cuts you off. Rather than turn around and cussing at the person, perhaps say, thank you, Jesus, because we did not get into an accident. And say it out loud so whoever is in the car with you, your kids, your friends, whoever, will hear that you're giving Jesus credit for that. The second thing you can do is say grace. We've kind of gotten away from saying grace at our meals. I know we tend to say it when we're in church, but do we say it when we go to the fast food restaurant? <laughs> Probably not. But stop a moment and say grace before you tear into that bag and eat those hamburgers. Let your kids know what your faith is and where it comes from. Let your family and friends know what you are appreciative for. And finally, share a life story. What's a life story? I'm sure you have heard of the elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is a few, like 30 seconds that you have to share with someone what you do for a living or what you want them to purchase or what you want them to do. The life story is 30 seconds that you can share with someone about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. What some, some story that happened in your life that's really powerful that you can share in just a few seconds. Well, maybe when you're stuck on an elevator with someone or when you're in the grocery line with someone. You know, when they're grumbling and complaining because the line is too long, maybe there's a story you can share there that will help them see there is a different way. We don't have to stand around grumbling and complaining because we're in line. There's something else we can do. Those three things should get you to the point where you can start sharing with people. Look for opportunities. Look for those open doors, just tiny openings where you have a chance to share Jesus. Because if we don't share Jesus, no one else will. And if no one else shares Jesus, what happens? He's gone. That's it. There's no one. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for this opportunity to share with your people. Help them to receive the message. 
help us to be able to go out and share the good news with others. In Jesus' name, amen.